and welcome to a brand new podcast series, The Christmas Cast. I'm your host Natalia and we're in conversation with Pastor Jeremy. Yes, you're right. This is the Christmas edition and in this podcast we'll be talking about a few characters from the Gospels. This podcast provides cautionary wisdom about ways we miss Christ in our Christmas celebration and also about what it meant for Christ to come and how was it historical. Hello Pastor Jeremy. Hi Nat, I'm excited about this uh, new podcast because Christmas is coming and I love Christmas. It's the best time of year, especially for the weather, but also because we could talk about how Jesus came to be among us. I'm looking forward to what you have in store for us. And again, if you haven't liked or subscribed to our channel, please do that so that you are abreast with every episode that comes our way. Why do we do this? Because maybe you need it, maybe your friend needs it, maybe your your cousin needs it. And we, we're hoping you'll, you'll send it out, you'll, you'll get the word out. And these are simple ways to spread the gospel, to spread the good news, to spread the truth amidst everything that is going on all around us. You could, could just pass this on to your peers and people can listen to it. Just a few minutes of truth, of biblical sobriety, so that we can stay pure and alert about what's real, what's not real, what's true, what's not true because of all the stuff that can distract us from Christmas this year. So again, the theme is to stay Christ at the center, keep Christ at the center of our Christmas this year, and to stay away from all other attractions and distractions. All right, so thank you so much for joining us for this podcast. As we move forward, we're going to be looking at some very exciting characters on this episode entitled The Christmas Cast. Great, thank you for that. So let's kick it off and begin with Jesus, our center and main character of Christmas. And can we talk a little bit about the angel Gabriel and the role he plays in this Christmas cast? Yes, we have to start with Jesus. To begin with the character of Christ in the story of Christmas, we want to go back to prophecy because prophecy is where the story began. Jesus is seen in all the scriptures right from creation to crown, from Genesis to Revelation. The name Emmanuel is specifically associated with the prophecy found in the Old Testament particularly in the book of Isaiah. The prophecy is often cited in the context of the coming Messiah, the one who would come, and he would be born of a virgin. So the prophecies are quite specific. But what's intriguing is the name Jesus was given to him in the Gospels. You will call him Jesus, for he shall be the savior of the world. But if you backtrack to the prophecies in Isaiah, and to the nation of Israel, and to humanity in general, God was promising to come be amidst us. God was going to enter time, space, and matter, and he was going to walk our path in our shoes. He was going to associate with us. He was going to be a man of suffering, acquainted with grief. He was going to be one who knew our struggles, our failings, our falterings, and knew our brokenness. He was going to taste death for all men. So the bigger thing about Jesus, not just what he did on the cross, and not just the fact that he was named Jesus, the one who will save us from our sins, was the fact that God was going to come amidst us. Now, this opens up a plethora of theological discussions on the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the first and foremost one about Christ is not so much a role as Savior, but that he is God in the flesh. He's not a man who claimed to be God. He's a God who claimed to be man. And for God to take on humanity can be quite violating for some religions and schools of thought. To think that God can have a son and that God can send his son, all of these things, they tangent some very difficult thought processes which can only be accepted in faith. But the essence of the matter is that God, holy God, almighty God, never seen before God, was going to step down in his great condescension, empty himself of his glory, of his beauty, of his holiness, in all of his majesty, and he was going to become a humble human being. He was going to take on flesh. Yes, for the purpose of sacrifice, for the purpose of going to the cross, but he was going to do that. And I want to stress here that the primary goal was to be with you, to come to be with you. And that's where the name Emmanuel makes sense. He was going to be with us. Isaiah 7.14 is where you find this um, 
this prophecy. He says, therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and should call his name Emmanuel. Later on in the Gospels, Matthew extends that, expands that to give you the the meaning of the word Emmanuel, which means God with us. So my dear friends, Emmanuel is God with us. Christmas is God amidst us, that he whom was separate and holy and we could never touch or feel or speak to or sit down to dinner with has stepped in to our life, our reality, time, space and matter, to our homes and is now the head of our tables. And we can have a relationship with Almighty God through the Lord Jesus Christ. He is with us and he's with us to stay. That's the beauty of Emmanuel. These passages emphasize the fulfillment of the prophecy in the birth of Jesus Christ. Emmanuel giving us a significant name, highlighting the divine nature of the Messiah as God with his people. A man giving up his life for others, sacrificing his life, that's not the newest concept. I mean, there are many men who have done that, and that's wonderful. But God coming down and being amidst us, that is history making. Let's take you from there to the next closest person to God. The next closest person to God, other than Christ himself, is the angel Gabriel. Angel Gabriel was an archangel. That means the Bible expresses these angels or describes these angels as the six around the very throne of God. They were throne bearers. And there were two above the throne of God, two beside and two beneath. And as it were wings, in terms of visualization, they covered the throne of God like a crystal. So these archangels were actually given the task of protecting everyone else from the incredible light of God. And as they ministered to God right there, they were the highest in the ranking order of angels. So that close to God and from that proximity came Angel Gabriel, two people, two women, Mary and Elizabeth. These two would be the bearers of two of God's greatest prophets, the Lord Jesus Christ and John the Baptist, who was the fulfillment of the prophet that was to come in the spirit and power of Elijah. I find these absolutely fascinating because Jesus was God himself and he used Mary as the human agency to come into the world and to take on flesh. And Elizabeth was another godly woman that was used to bring about John the Baptist, who would be the prophet that came in the spirit and power of Elijah. And he was filled, he was indwelt by the Holy Spirit from birth. Nobody in history, has been indwelt by the Spirit of God from birth. Nobody, except John the Baptist. So we have these two ladies, these two women, young women, godly women. And in Luke chapter 1, verse 26 to 38, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth. So we have this emissary, this messenger, Gabriel, making his way from the very throne of God to the small town of Galilee, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, that is King David. So we had got the genealogy as well. And this virgin's name was Mary. Now you know the story and I don't want to complete that story right here. But essentially, Gabriel was the one who had the task of bringing the news, the commission to Mary. And he was the one who told her. And then you've got Elizabeth, in Luke chapter 1, verse 39 to 45, in those days Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country to a town in Judah, and she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, and she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. The passage narrates Mary's visit to her relative Elizabeth, who is pregnant with John the Baptist. And the unborn John reacts to the presence of Jesus in Mary's womb. And Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, recognizes and affirms Mary and Mary's child. So this is a prophetic fulfillment coming together in two mighty prophets about to be born and two amazing women who would be the star cast of our narrative here. 
These passages provide the biblical account of the angel Gabriel's visit to Mary and to Elizabeth, playing a crucial role in the unfolding events surrounding the births of Jesus and John the Baptist. I absolutely love these these characters because they literally come from God. So you've got Gabriel who came from the very throne of God. Then you've got John the Baptist who's filled with the Holy Spirit, that is God. And then you've got Jesus who is God. And then you've got these two women out of nowhere whom God chooses and brings into the whole story. There's no man involved so far. There's no curse. There's no sign of sin. God is dealing with humanity in this purest form as he takes these two women. And Gabriel gets the amazing opportunity to bring the news to these ladies. So that's my first three cast characters. Well, Jesus, and then you've got Gabriel, and then you've got Mary, and you have Elizabeth. I'm sure we're going to talk about Mary and Elizabeth more in the future, but that's my four. Thank you so much for joining, and we'll have all the Bible verses referenced by Pastor in the comment section. Do write to us at psjeremy at gmail.com, or you can even write to us in the comment section of Spotify, and we'd love to hear from you and see what you've been understanding, and even take some questions from here. And we'll see you in the next podcast.